Good morning. It is uh, great to see you today. Uh, the last several days have been like a whirlwind. Uh, we, uh, I was almost in the whirlwind. Fortunately, I got out in time. I, I actually, and, and Dan would know this song, and B, and if you're as old as I am, you might know this song, the monkey song that says, take the last train to Clarksville. I want you to know that I got the last flight and the last seat. I mean, that's what the ticket master from Southwest said when I called on Monday and said, you know, I'm scheduled to fly out of here on Thursday, but Wednesday, Milton is coming, and I don't want to see him. So can I fly out of here tomorrow? And he said, sir, the only flight that we have to Indianapolis tomorrow is at 7.30. Now, that's significant when you think about it. You have to be at the airport two hours before the flight. So I had to be there by 5.30. Uh, it's it's. 40 minutes at least, sometimes it's an hour from where I live to the airport, so now we're backing up another hour. It, it turned out that on, on the Tuesday morning, I was up at 3 o'clock, my ride picked me up at 3, or at 4, and I was at the airport by 5. Um, I was absolutely the last person on that plane. Southwest, you don't have assigned seats, you have a position to stand. My, it's A, B, and C. My position was C57. That's the end of the line. There's only three spots beyond that. A couple of people did come on a little later on. They were standby uh, flyers. On a, on a full flight of people who had been to Disney World and children, and, and uh, I always hate to be the last one on because I like to have an in seat. And uh, <clears throat> I can tell you, there were no in seats, and I hate to have a middle seat, depending on who's on either side of me. And I got on the plane, and I'm walking back, and the first middle seat that was open, the guy sitting on the end, if he weighed 500 pounds, he weighed 500 pounds. He was a big guy. I said, there's no way I'm going to try to sit next to him and somebody else. I, I, I passed one other guy that way. And about halfway back on the flight, I, there were two, I thought they were teenage girls, okay? The middle seat was open. I said, ladies, do you mind if I said, oh, no, you can sit here. Uh, the girl uh, had the window seat. She was very quiet, didn't say anything. And the other lady, she was smartly dressed, and I thought she was a teenager. turned out that the kids behind me were her kids. <laughs> Coming back from Disney, very, very fine lady. Uh, so anyway... I was glad to uh, land in Indy, uh, get my car out of the garage, and uh, get home. People have already asked me, well, did your house get damaged from the hurricane? If, if you live in Florida and, and you live anywhere inland, and, and Winter Haven is probably 45 to 48 miles inland from Tampa, and if you understand, you know, pe people who... Uh, People who live in Florida, if you've lived there for a while, you understand these things about hurricanes. My friend from Virginia called me and said, oh, you better get out of there quick, man. That thing's going to blow you away. I said, well, I'm not going to panic yet. Uh, so when, when a hurricane comes, and as soon as it hits land, now the people on in Tampa, St. Petersburg, all the barrier islands got what is called the... Uh, super rush and uh, some other places got flooded I saw a guy on the news <clears throat> before the before the hurricane he was cleaning out his house because it got flooded when the I forgot the girl's name that went up the coast uh, his house got flooded he was cleaning that out and he said and I'm going to get flooded again he, I mean he knew he was if you live on the water that's almost a given and, a real, it, and, and it only has to rain about 8 inches before that happens, okay? So it doesn't, it doesn't take a hurricane. So anyway, um, my place survived it. Uh, my sister, God bless her, she sent me a text and said, well, is your house okay? I said, no, no damage at all. She said, well, praise God. 
divine intervention. <laughs> and I cautioned her. I said, please, don't say that. Because uh, people who live in the park that I live in, we all love Jesus, okay? Three of their homes had the roofs blown off. So does God not love them? I'm always careful about that stuff. I, I'm always glad, and I praise God if I don't have damage, but I don't make a big deal about it because the next time it might be my turn to lose a roof, okay? It's just the facts of life in Florida, and, and, and you get used to it. You don't like it necessarily, but, but you get used to it. But I will tell you, I'm kind of glad to be back in, uh, in uh, Illinois where the temperature is a little cooler. The first thing I noticed the other night when I got off the plane, walked out and to catch my ride, the uh, humidity was, was breathtaking. I mean, it just takes your breath away. And uh, that's, that's, that's also a fact of life in Florida. So I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to hold on just a second. This thing drives me nuts. I'm glad to be back in, in Illinois, and I'm glad to see all of you again. So here's what I'd like you to do this morning. I'd like you to, to turn to the person next to you and say, you look marvelous today. Go ahead. Do it. And he, you got to mean it now. And, and, okay. And, and if it happens to be your, if it happens to be your husband or your wife that's sitting next to you, uh, there better be a, a note of sincerity in your voice, all right? Because I want you to go home and enjoy dinner today and Enjoy the week, all right? Okay. All right. It seemed like there was something else I need to tell you, but um, I forgot what it is. I'll think about it probably about 8 o'clock tonight. If you want me to, I'll call you. When I was in Hampton, Virginia years ago at, at the Hampton Church of the Nazarene. Uh, the guy that taught the adult class had the largest class Sunday school. He had 40 to 50 adults in his class every Sunday. His name was Wayne Kendall. <clears throat> I said to him one day, I said, Wayne, what do you, what do you contribute to success to you always having 40 to 50 people in your Sunday school class every Sunday? He said, well, Pastor, I'll tell you. He said, I get up at 5.30 in the morning. At 6 o'clock, I start calling them, and I say this to them. This is all I say when they answer the phone. I say, if you get up now and get ready, you won't be late for Sunday school. I said, boy, Wayne, don't, don't people get frustrated with you calling them early in the morning? He said, well, they don't seem to, and they show up for Sunday school, so what can I say? I said, sound, sound like a winner to me. Okay, so I'm not going to call you at some ungodly hour. Okay. Well, I don't always preach off of my phone. Uh, I've got a bunch of sermons on there, and I was leaping through the other day. I said, man, there's some good sermons in here. What, what am I doing? So, uh, but I, I want to tell you a story today that, that I, I'm confident. I, I've told this story several times. <clears throat> the people that I'm going to tell you about are people that I know, and I not only know them, I'm related to them, not only related to him, but it is my niece and her husband and what God did in their life. And, and I want you if, you, brought, if you brought a Bible with you this morning, uh, I don't know why I can't find anything on this phone. I need, I need to. If you brought a Bible with you this morning, tur turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter, chapter 11. Now, you know this verse. I quote this verse uh, uh, occasionally when I'm thinking about uh, the subject of faith, uh, but I, I want you to see it this morning, and, and if you brought a Bible, you can mark in, and please always bring the Bible you can write in. Uh, I want you to underline a word in this verse. You found it? Here it is. Now, faith is the substance of things what? Hope for the evidence 
things not seen. Would you repeat that verse with me this morning? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then if you would turn uh, forward in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 5. And in chapter 5, go to verse 1 and then go scroll on down to verse 3 because I want to begin reading there, okay? Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Here's what Paul said. We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces what? Oh, and listen to this, and hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who, he had, who has been given to us. I want to introduce you. Uh, when, when I first started telling the story, I had to I had to use aliases because they were in the process of uh, adoption, and uh, they said I asked permission. I said I, I want to tell your story, and, and and Kelly, my niece, said, "Well, Uncle Jim, you can tell our story, but you you can't use our names yet. There'll be a time when you can do that. I'm happy to report to you, and, and their pictures are going to come up here in a minute." I'm going to introduce them to you. There they are. This is Kelly and Jeremy and their children, okay? Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful story, and, and I just want you to see that picture and see them. Uh, I, I've known Kelly since she was this high. Uh, their dad, who was at, at here for uh, Barb's memorial service, and came back, he and his wife, and they told me in Florida, they said, well, we're going to come out to, to Illinois again and see you. And I said, well, you're welcome to come at any time. I think they were kind of uh, impressed with moonshine. <laughs> well, I'd never seen anything like that before. <laughs> I mean, who has? But I want you to meet uh, Kelly and Jeremy. Their dad was my youth pastor in South Carolina many moons ago. And when I got a call to Springdale, Arkansas, the church there said, look, we understand you have a, a youth pastor. We have a bunch of kids. Uh, so if, if you'd like, uh, we'll pay your youth pastor to come with you. And so we all moved in a big moving van. We all moved to Springdale, Arkansas. We moved there. The church didn't have a parsonage, and so we rented a house. And and my brother-in-law Jim and, and his wife's name's Kathy, they rented a house, but not close to us in another part of town. Uh, but the school was not good where they had rented their house, and so their kids went to school down the street from where we lived. And every day when uh, school was over, they would walk up and stay with. Barb until Kathy, their mom, got off work and she would come pick them up and take them home. So I, I have known Kelly and her sister Kate. And by the way, last uh, Saturday uh, we drove down to Punta Gorda where my brother in law has a condo and I've never seen his condo. We, my son and I drove down there uh, in my Miata, as a matter of fact. And uh, and my brother-in-law, or my, my son said to my brother-in-law, now look, you know, I've come down here to see your condo, but I've also come down here to eat some good fresh fish. Do you know a good place? And I'm telling you, we went to a dynamite place uh, and overlooking the bay and had some wonderful, wonderful seafood. It makes me hungry even thinking about it this morning. And Kate was there. Kate is the mother of four boys. I don't even have time to tell you about the adventures of her raising these four boys that she posted on Facebook. I reminded her of some of them and 
we laughed about it. She said, don't tell those public employees, and I'm not going to do that. Kelly and Jeremy, they, uh, they were teenagers, they knew each other, went to church together, fell in love as, as later teens, and, and one day Kelly called me and said, Uncle Jim, uh, Jeremy's asked me to marry him, and I've, I've consented, but we want you to perform the wedding ceremony, and I said, well, Kelly, I'd be glad to do that, but but I always require premarital counseling for anybody that I marry, and, and I know we're related, and I know I know you. I don't know Jeremy all that well, but she said, well, how can we do that? And, and so we worked it out. They came down from New Jersey and spent the weekend with us in Virginia. I was so impressed when two young people, and we lived at that time in a, Parsonage that was two stories. We had four bedrooms. It was just Barb and I. And so they came and stayed, and, and somebody said, well, aren't, aren't you worried about them you know, staying together? You know, are, are you keeping an eye on them? I said, you know what? I don't have to keep an eye on them. You know why? Because these kids love Jesus. When I see two young people who say to me, now, Uncle Jim, Jeremy, Jeremy and I, if you don't mind, we're going to have devotions together before we go to bed. Well, who would mind that? Who would say, no, you can't do that? That's the quality of young people that Kelly and Jeremy were. What a wedding. I'm telling you, one of the biggest weddings that I've ever been a part of that took place in southern New Jersey where they live. Got married. And it wasn't long after they got married until Miss Emma came. Beautiful girl who is now, by the way, 15 years of age. I think that's her standing. Be, uh, let me see. No, that's her right there with the long curly hair in the dark. That, that's Emma. She's 15 then. When all this happened, Emma was about eight years old. And after Emma was born, Kelly and Jeremy, they, they, wanted, they wanted to have other children, and, and they tried, but it just never seemed to happen. And it became a burden on Kelly's heart. Now, I understand that, because I remember the day when, when my wife said to me, you know, hon, I am so under it because we are not able to have children the way everybody else has. And the other day, on the way to work, and, and we had a little red Volkswagen, and that's what she drove to work down the mountain into a little town called Stewart, Virginia, where she was a lab tech, about 20 miles down the mountain. She said, I was, I was driving down the mountain the other day, huh? and, and, and I was so under, and I was talking to God and pleading to God and saying, God, you know how desperately I'd like to have a child. And she said, Hon, I want you to know, I don't know how it's going to happen. Because we'd already discovered medically that it was going to be impossible for us to have children like everybody else did. And she said, I don't know how it's going to happen. Hon, but God said, God got in that little red Volkswagen with me and promised me that we were going to have a child. That's another story pretty much the same. It was under it so much that, that on her face before God, she said, oh God, you know, we're, we're, we love Emma, we're happy with Emma, but oh God, we, 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 we're trying, we'd like to have another child. One day in agony, in, in pouring her heart out before God, God came into that room where Kelly was praying. She told me this story. God said, Kelly, heard your prayer. But you know, Kelly, there's a lot of children in the world today that have no mom and dad. And, and so the thought came to her and Jeremy, you know, we could become foster parents. And that's what they did. Over the course of just a few months, three 
African American children came into their home. What a blessing. What a blessing. They were approved to be be the the foster parents of the of these children. One of them was a little girl who when she came into Kelly and Jeremy's home just just weighed uh, uh, six pounds. So when in the course of a few weeks and months they went from one child at that time age eight to four little girls in their home. What is what is it the writer of Hebrews said? Now faith is the substance of what? Things hope for. The evidence of seen things not seen. And what did what did Paul say in, in Romans chapter five? Paul said that hope does not disappoint. And I will tell you this morning that hope does not disappoint for this reason. God is faithful. Do you believe that today? You see, I, I'm wondering this morning what you might be here hoping for. You say, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a better life, or, uh, or I'm hoping for a better job, or, or I'm hoping to be physically healed of, of some sickness, or, or I'm, I'm hoping to find spiritual healing in my life. I'm hoping for a wayward child, or in, in my situation, wayward children. hoping for that too. One of the things I always appreciated about Kelly and Jeremy, they never blamed God. They never said, Lord, you know, if you really loved us, if, if, if you really cared about us, why, we would have children. We, we, we would have more children. The way everybody else has children. If you really, if you really cared for us, they they never said that. They never they never put the blame on God. They just simply trusted God and knew that somehow, some way, God was faithful, and their hope that Paul said does not disappoint. Someday, somehow, would be realized. And as they hoped, and as they trusted in God, and as they prayed, they did three other things. That if you're hoping for something this morning, you need to do as well, and I need to do as well. And here it is. First of all, they knew that hope serves faithfully. T.D. Jakes African-American pastor for Pastors of the Potter's House in Dallas, Texas, said this, as Christians, we are servants. And when we are faithful to serve God, God rewards us, listen to this, by fulfilling that which we hope for. You see, Kelly and Jeremy could have got mad at God. Kelly and Jeremy could have said, God, you know, if that's the way you're going to treat us. We're not. We're, we're just going to live for ourselves. We're not going to serve. They never said that. I will be honest with you this morning. I don't believe that thought ever crossed their minds. They were so in love with each other and so in love with Jesus. They could have gotten bitter. They, they, they could, and, and that's what some people do when. When, when you're hoping for something and you're praying for something and it doesn't happen over a period uh, of time, it's easy to say, why? 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 Why doesn't that happen? It's easy to get mad at God and get bitter toward God. I will tell you this morning, Kelly and Jeremy never got bitter. And here's what they did while they were waiting. served. They served. And we 
should do what they did. But we're waiting for a new pastor. And, and it has taken longer, I'm sure, than some of you probably thought would be necessary. If, but if you just knew uh, how, how there's such a shortage of pastors and, and, and what have you, you would understand. My, my, my friends, and, and, and I do have friends, and, and some of them are district superintendents in the Church of the Nazarene, and they, would, they tell me, they tell me, Pastor, Pastor Jim, we, we can't find pastors. In fact, the last time I talked to the assistant DS in, in Virginia, he said to me, Jim, hey, listen, the, the Christiansburg Church is open. I know that church. You want to come and pastor it? <laughs> no, I, I said, I think I'll, I'll continue to do what I'm doing. I said, why would you ask me that, George? He said, because we need pastors bad, and I try to recruit them any, anywhere I can find a recruiter. It's not easy. It's not easy. And, and I, listen, what I, what I really appreciate is your patience, okay? Because it's easy to get, to get antsy. It's easy to say, Lord, Lord, this is your church. Do you not love the Charleston Church of God enough to help us find a uh, uh, pastor, the pastor you want to be here. Well, I want to tell you this morning, God does love this church that much and more. And in turn, you and I have to just continue to serve while we're waiting and while we're hoping. Because that's what hope does. The second thing that hope does is hope waits patiently. Jeremiah believed by most to be the author of the book of Lamentations wrote these words. In chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, Jeremiah said, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore, listen to this, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Now, here's what I know, and, and I know it because I'm a human just like you are. Probably the hardest thing that we ever do as human beings is to wait for something. I remember when, when I was a, a boy, I would, I, would, I would want something, want to do something, uh, want, want my dad to give me something or my mom, and, and they, they would never say no. They, they would say, hey, you have to wait. I don't want to hear those words because what I wanted, I wanted it then. That doesn't change when you become an adult. It's, it's, it's difficult to wait for anything. It's, it's difficult to wait for a traffic light. Oh, I get frustrated at traffic lights. Boy, there's one down here on Lincoln. And, and you know what? I think it's the longest traffic light. It's, it's on 4th Street. I catch that light almost every time I go down that way. I said, oh, here we go. It, it finally changes. It always does, but wait. <laughs> One of the best inventions that, that ever came out, and I remember walking into the sanctuary of, of Wichita Falls First Nazarene on a Sunday. It was Pastor Appreciation Day, and on the platform there was a table, and on the table was a, a, a something that uh, looked like a box with a quill over it, and during the service, they said, oh, Pastor, listen, uh, we, we wanted to pre present you and Miss Barbara with, and they pulled the, the, the cover off of it, and it was a microwave oven. Now, microwave ovens are about this big now. They're, they're not big at all. That one was this big. I mean, it was like having a, almost like having a regular oven, but, and it, was, it wasn't electronic. It was spring-loaded. Tell you, man, no more 
cold sandwiches, no more cold leftovers. You pop them in the microwave, turn that dial to the seconds you want, and hot food, free, that you didn't have to wait on. We don't like to wait. That's why companies like Apple, Microsoft, always building faster and faster machines. Because no matter how fast our computer is, no matter how fast our phone may be, every new phone, every new computer has a faster chip inside. And sometimes things roll by so fast I don't even, I don't even see them. Waiting. Hope waits patiently. Paul wrote in, in Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25, these words, hope that is seen is no hope at all. I mean, if you see it, you're not hoping for it. It's there. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, listen to this, we wait for it and then thirdly, Kelly and Jeremy discovered that hope is rewarded. I, I used this word, and then I thought, well, you know, I don't know. I'm not even sure that's a word. But I looked it up in the dictionary, and it is. Hope is rewarded grandly, which means in a big way in a majestic way, on a grand scale, awesomely, breathtakingly, impressively. All of those are from Webster's Dictionary. When we practice the definition of faith, God rewards us in ways that are beyond our comprehension. Amen? How many of you have believed God for something not only God not only answered your prayer, but he, he added to that. That's faith. That's faith. Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Sometime after God so blessed Kelly and Jeremy, and by the way, those African American children are wampers. That's their last name. They're they're adopted. When Kelly sent me the picture, she sent me two pictures: one with their faces that you saw this morning, and the other with with little hearts on the faces of the children. She said, Uncle Jim, I, we're, we're concerned if, if you're streaming uh, on Facebook, we're, we're concerned about, and, and I guess there is a concern that, that uh, child predators monitor Facebook for children. I had no idea. So they were out there. Kelly was at her dad's. This is before the adoption was finalized. This is after God put these children in their home. My brother-in-law, who was here, said to Kelly, Kelly, are you, are you all right, honey? You, you, look, you don't look well. Are you okay? She said, well, I haven't been feeling well the last few days. My stomach's been upset. My brother-in-law said, uh, well, Brother Moses said, Kel, do you suppose that you might be pregnant? I said, Dad, are you kidding me? All of these months that turned into a, a couple of years that we tried and tried and tried and nothing ever happened, and you're asking me that question, are you kidding? And on the way home, Jeremy, 
salvation. Check. So they stopped at a drugstore, got a pregnancy test, took it in the, took it, and guess what? Kelly was pregnant. And, and in, oh, the picture's gone. And in the picture, there's a little guy in the front. He has strawberry blonde hair like his mama, little freckles like his mama, Grayson now six years old, was born into that family. I'm telling you, if your faith and your confidence is in God, whatever you're hoping for, if you'll keep on hoping, if you'll keep on serving, if you'll keep on waiting patiently and keep on trusting in God, listen, God rewards those who faithfully seek him and believe in him. Do you believe that today? I'll tell you, I believe that with everything that's in me and the reason I believe that is the Bible says it's true and I believe it for that reason but I've lived long enough now and have experienced those kinds of situations happening in my life and in the life of my family until I know it's true. It's not something that I I guess about anymore. It's something that I know is true. And so when I when I have a need, I, I just trust God for it and believe God to meet the need. And He I will tell you this morning, He has never failed me. He will never fail you. Can I pray with you today, Father? Thank you. songs that were sung this morning actually speak to that. And speak to the faith that we can have in you. I, I couldn't help but, but think about that old gospel songwriter who wrote, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness on Christ. The solid rock I stand for all of the ground is simply solid. Lord, as we who are your children hope and wait for certain things to happen in our lives. Oh God, help us to be faithful, faithful to keep on serving, faithful to wait patiently for it, and know, and know that if we will serve and wait patiently, we will be rewarded Thank you for this precious family. Thank you for the story that that they have told with their own lives, Lord, and, and the encouragement that it has been as I've shared this story in many places to other people. Continue to bless them, I pray, in these days, and bless us in these days, Lord. Oh, God, out there somewhere, I believe it with everything that's in me. Out there somewhere is that person who is to be the pastor of this church. Help us to continue to hope, to continue to wait patiently, to continue to keep on serving, doing our part, Lord. This is the church. Yes, the church needs a pastor, but it needs faithful attenders look after the business of the church and to continue doing the work of the ministry. Help us to be faithful as we hope and as we pray. We ask it in your wonderful name today. Amen.